Google Voice, WhatsApp, IPTV. Just like you see right here, IPTV. These three things are, people are just not getting it. They're not understanding. So I'm here to try to explain this better. I, I don't know how else to make it any better. And I'll get started on as soon as I come back. Hey. Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. Okay, let's talk about Google Voice. I get a lot of questions from people about Google Voice. I get emails, I get comments, and so forth. I've done a couple videos about Google Voice, and it seems to be a a source of misunderstanding and confusion for quite a few people. I understand because I went through the same thing myself. But I want to try to explain this in as close to layman terms, terms as I can get it. Google Voice, okay? Folks, Google Voice is a web-based application. What that means is that you go to the internet to use it, okay? It's, that's all there is to it. You can download the app for, or for iOS. It's in the App Store, okay? And for Android, I believe it's in the Google Play Store. Now, I don't recommend putting Google Voice on your phone. Why, Don? <laughs> because, I mean, isn't that what it's for? Well... No, not really. And the reason why is I say not really is because Google Voice is a web-based application. You go to the internet to use it. If you put it on your phone you, and set internal notifications for it, then you can use it on your phone. I've never had much luck with that. But the thing that I didn't like about it the most, oh, and the reason why I didn't have much luck with it it's because I'm here in Ecuador, I guess. When I, when I had Google Voice on the phone, I would get notifications about phone calls coming in, but my phone wouldn't ring. I couldn't go, oh. All I could do was get a notification that I got a call. I didn't like that. I didn't like the fact that I got interrupted multiple times throughout the day by somebody calling my old number in the United States, which for most of the time, 99.99% .99 of the time, it's spam. I mean, how many, how many times can your warranty on your car expire? You know? And calls for signing up for Medicare, calls for insurance, you know, uh, college uh, tuition debt relief programs, all this stuff. But back to my point. The point is, you when you are using Google Voice, you're you're going to the internet. You use like like I have here. I'm gonna show you. I've, I've showed this before. I have this headset. Okay, I put it on. I can get it unhooked. Put it on my head just like that. I got a microphone here. I plug the USB port into my laptop. I log into Google Voice on, well, I launch Google or Chrome and I log into Google Voice with my Google ID. I use my mouse, okay, to manipulate the keypad that's on screen and I make phone calls. These phone calls, I don't do this to make phone calls here in Ecuador. I use it to make phone calls back home to people in the United States, which is very rare, you know. And so I'm doing everything on the Internet. Now, as far as the phone number is concerned, when you sign up for Google Voice, you can get a phone number. You can pick a phone number. You can pick it for whatever zip code you want. Or area code, I guess. It's area code. 
helicopter flying by. But you can pick any number you want. And you get to use that for free as long as you make at least two calls a month, if I remember right. Okay, Google Voice will let you have their service for free and you can pick your phone number as long as you use it. You use it or you lose it. Now, having said that, if you, if you want to have your old phone number, so let's say you have your phone number at AT&T and you've had it for 10 years. Before you come here and you know you're going to cancel that service, before you cancel your service from AT&T, you got to get this timing right, okay? Then you can go to Google Voice and port your phone number over to, or you can assign it, okay? Let me put it that way. You can assign your phone number to Google Voice. That's porting your phone number. It's the same thing as if you go from AT&T to T-Mobile and you want to keep your phone number. They will port the phone number from AT&T to T-Mobile or from T-Mobile to Verizon or Cricket or whatever. It's the same thing. If you, you want to get close your AT&T or your Verizon or your T-Mobile account and you want to keep your phone number, you can assign that phone number to Google Voice. That's porting your phone number. And now it's in the United States. It's actually, it's worldwide, if you think about it. That's why they call it the World Wide Web, right? Google is a web application, World Wide Web. So, why do I keep my Google Voice number? Because at my investment house, my banks, um, a couple of places where I have my old, where I have an old account and my old phone number is, is registered there. And let's say I need to log into that account and they want to do dual factor authentication with me. And they, they, they dial that number. Well, the nice thing about it, if they dial my Google voice number, which will be the case, then as soon as they do it, I get a notification on my phone and it's actually in my email because I'm using Gmail, which by the way, do you see the pattern here? Everything here is all Google related. I use my Google account, my Google email, and I use Google Voice. And I'm on YouTube, which is owned by Google. Won't be long, everything will be owned by Google, if not Elon Musk. <laughs> I wonder how long it's going to be before Elon Musk buys Google. But anyway, when, and when you, like when, oh, oh yeah, I, I get the, the email. I get the email. There's my code. Okay. It actually, I don't even have to open the email. It just shows up on my home screen on my phone. Gmail notification. And I can see the summary line of what's in the email. And it shows the code that I have to enter in my computer. And I can log in. That's all done through Google Voice. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is WhatsApp. I never really heard much about WhatsApp until I started looking into coming to Ecuador, and I kept seeing, when I started doing research and talk, listening to Amelia and Jack, uh, J JP, I, you know, I kept seeing WhatsApp, WhatsApp. It's a free application you download from the Play Store, or from the application store on the iPhone. And it's, here we go, it's a web-based application. It's internet-based. It's called, it's, it's voice over IP, just like Google Voice, okay? But WhatsApp is used all over the world. I don't think very many people use it in the United States, but they should, because the advantage of it is that as long as you have an internet connection, you've got basically communications capabilities, okay? When you load up WhatsApp on your phone, you, you have to have a phone number to assign to it so that it, you know, knows it's like it's address, okay? I don't want to get too technical here. That's why I'm pausing here. I'm trying not to be too technical, but... If you know, every device that you have that's on the internet has an address, it's called a MAC address, 
Well, WhatsApp doesn't have a MAC address. It uses your phone number. And that's how you associate an address with your WhatsApp application. The address for your Google Voice application is a phone number. Okay? I hope I got that right. If I didn't, I'm sure somebody will tell me. And I will appreciate that. And if I have to make a correction video, I'll do that. So you, you download WhatsApp and you put it on your phone and tell all your friends and your family, everybody, put WhatsApp on your phone. And if they go, oh, I don't know how to do that, and you know, well then tell them that you're sorry and you say bye-bye. But, you know, most people will understand. You can go get help from somebody. Download, put WhatsApp on your phone, associate your phone number to it, and the whole benefit to having is when you get here to Ecuador, you're going to use WhatsApp for 99% of your communication. All your friends that you have here, text messaging and phone calls, you can do it all on WhatsApp. You don't have to use your local phone number. I mean, you can if you want to. If everybody used WhatsApp, then anytime you've got access to the web, you've got communications. It's as simple as that. When I came here, the very first thing I did was I went to a Claro store and got a SIM card for my phone. It's a Claro SIM card. And then I got an Ecuadorian phone number that starts with area code plus 593. The second thing I did was I changed my phone number on my WhatsApp from my previous phone number back home to the new Claro phone number. So now it's a local local number. When I needed to call a doctor, I got on Facebook and said, we're going to get a doctor. Well, what did they give me? They gave me a WhatsApp address, a WhatsApp number for Dr. Garcia, Dr. Gladys Garcia. And I contacted her on WhatsApp. I texted her. I didn't call her. I texted her. Said who I was. I'm Tom Shader. I need help. I was told to call you. And next thing you know, I got a message right back saying, sure, hi, Don. Nice to meet you, et cetera, et cetera. I can be there at 3 o'clock today. What's your address? And here she came. I ordered, went to order pizza last night. Guess where I was going to order it from? WhatsApp. You go online to local restaurants here and you see... You know, you, you see a WhatsApp number. They all have the WhatsApp symbol, you know, on WhatsApp. Which, by the way, WhatsApp is a Meta company. So when I first came here last year and Facebook went down for the day, WhatsApp was down. But I like it. <clears throat> but, you know, I don't really like texting on my phone that much because it's, it's, it's awkward for me. You know, because you fat finger too much. you got to watch what you say and how you type it and stuff. But I like having WhatsApp on my laptop because then I can use my keyboard on my laptop to text my friends back and forth at the speed of light. <laughs> That's WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a valuable, invaluable tool. Get all your friends and family to put it on their phone. You put it on your phone whether you think you're going to need it or not. Because I guarantee you, when you get here, you're going to need it. And if you don't understand how to use it, meet me for breakfast by my five dollar breakfast and I'll give you all the education you need on WhatsApp. I've already done it for several people that have come here. The third item is IPTV. It's the last item, okay? IPTV. I use that. That's another web-based application. IPTV. Internet Protocol Television. I use an IPTV service. I get over 16,000 channels. I get TV from all over the world. What is it? I'm not going to tell you. I've been told that I really shouldn't mention it because it's all a little iffy as far as being legal or not. I pay $11 a month for it. I have excellent TV service. I watch all the news and programs, my favorite programs from back home. I get movies, all the document, everything I want. Sports, all the sports I want, NFL, MLB, NHL, whatever. And it's all IP-based TV. Okay? 
Google it, folks. Get online. When you have a TV, you're obviously going to need either a smart TV or you need a Google Fire Stick or any type of streaming device that you can hook up to your TV, like Apple TV. You know, I don't recommend Apple TV because a lot of this stuff doesn't work here, but uh, the Fire Stick works. The Amazon Fire Stick works really good here. And you can put, you have to put a hosting service, a player. I use a, a player called TV Mate, T I V I M A T E, just like you'd see right here. And, and then I subscribe to an IPTV service. You can find a bunch of them, they're all online. You can get all kinds of information on it from Google. When you get here to Ecuador, if you need help setting it up, give me a call. And guess where you're going to call me? You're going to call me on WhatsApp. Well, actually, don't call me. Just text me on WhatsApp, and I'll help you. So that's about it. I don't know what else to say. Maybe I should mention VPN. I didn't mention VPN. Virtual Private Network. Get a VPN. Go ahead and subscribe to a VPN service. Subscribe to one for at least a year. And then when you get here, you'll know whether you need it or not. There will be times where you will need it. You'll be trying to watch something on online or on TV and you'll get service not available in your country because everything's IP based, everything's IP addressed. They know where you are, okay? There's no hiding anymore. So get a VPN, get Express VPN, Nord, NORD VPN. I use Viper VPN, V-Y-P-R VPN. It cost me $60 for three years. I don't know why they sell it that way, but that's what they do. It's $20 a year, you know? And I have encrypted point-to-point -point protection from here to there. The Internet thinks I'm in Miami. So that's it. That's all I got. I hope this helps you folks. Leave questions and comments in the comment section. I like talking about this kind of stuff. If you have any questions about it, like I always tell everybody, if, if you are you're just at your wit's end, you just don't get it, send me an email, give me your phone number, and I'll call you. I'll call you on my none other than my Google Voice. Okay? If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that like, thumbs up program or a button. If you don't like it, you know what you can do. So I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao. Are you grumpy? Are you a grumpy little gremlin? Are you a little grumpert wearing your grumpy pantaloons? Are you a floofy McGrump Grump? Is your name Grumpy McGrumperson?